Hey guys, welcome to SystemControlTech.com. I'm Jason Abston. I wanted to take a few minutes to talk with you about one of the basic principles of an air handler that can be easily changed to really make the entire system run more efficient. As you know, the main discharge temperature of a large air handler will usually run cooler than uh, what you may expect. That cooler air is used to cool down spaces throughout the building and whenever a space is below set point the air will be reheated within a particular zone through a VAV reheat system sometimes that is through hot water or even electric um, in the winter months it is not as critical to run a lower discharge temperature on an air handler as it is in the hotter summer months now one of the things that we can do that will really really help to improve the uh, the effectiveness of our air handling system is to raise the discharge temperature on the air handler by raising the discharge temperature on the air handler slightly we allow the hot water system to unload a bit it does not necessarily need to work as hard to keep the spaces warm um, if you have a 55 degree discharge temperature from an air handler and a reheat valve is having to stay at 100 percent all the time to maintain a 72 degree room temperature by raising that temperature from the air handler you can greatly reduce the amount of hot water or other type of energy used to reheat that air there are just some basic elements that can be done in your program logic each uh, energy management system is a little different however there are some basic principles that will apply to all one of the first things that we will need to do is to create a few analog value bits this can be easily done through simply adding them to a folder somewhere where we can find them here you can see that I have them in a folder labeled uh, air handler outside air reset and those elements, of course, the first thing that we will need, which is not in this particular folder, is the outside air temperature. However, it will be pulled into our logic loop. The, one of the elements that we need to create, of course, is the discharge air high limit set point. This value is the maximum value that we want to allow the air handler to calculate up to and the of course the opposite of that is the low temperature how low do we want that air handler to discharge based upon outside air temperature now we also have some variables in that as well that can be used and easily adjusted depending on how the building reacts some of the basic principles of this are when our outside air temperature is at 60 degrees or above we want our discharge air temperature to be at its minimum 55 degrees if we are at 40 degrees or below we want to be at our maximum discharge air temperature of 65 on this particular unit that can be higher or lower just depending on your building needs it's a very very simple logic loop that is created uh, here within the software that can really make your system very effective as you see here we have our outside air temperature binary I'm sorry an analog value that's pulled into our logic loop here are those points that we were looking at a moment ago these points here pulled into our logic loop and they're pulled simply into a span block which in this case it just basically performs a simple mathematical calculation looking at these values and then giving us an output value based upon these now as you can see here for our air handler we currently have a set point of 60.5 degrees based upon an outside air temperature of 49 degrees 
as well as the low variable and high variable set points combined with our minimum and maximum discharge temperature set points. If one of these are changed, it can easily change the discharge temperature set point. For example, if it will allow me, I will demonstrate. All right, if I were to change my outside air temperature, say if we went colder outside for whatever reason, let's say that we got down to 35 degrees, you will notice that this air handler, based upon that temperature value, and it'll take a moment for it to change, uh, based upon this temperature value, it will readjust our discharge temperature set point. There, as you can see, the now we're showing an outside air temperature of 35 degrees, which is not actually 35, it's just I overrode the logic, and it has calculated up to our maximum output set point. Now then, just the opposite will be true if we were to go the other way. For example, if we were to command this and override it to a value above our outside air temp variable, if we say go to 65 degrees instead of 35, you will see that based upon the logic, the value will change as well, uh, you can see that it immediately changed and went to a 55 degree temperature on the discharge temp set point. Now then, let's just put this back under normal control. Now, I'm just going to release that back to control and the value will actually go back to the original outside air temperature reading. If we are to look at the air handler itself, you can see that the discharge temperature is written into the set point for this particular unit. The, here is what our air handler is actually doing currently and if we look down to our set point which is a little easier to find in the uh, from the user view if we look to our set point we can see the value of 60.5 degrees for this particular air handler looking back at our logic we see that that is exactly what it is calculated to all of these values here are input attributes which means they're real world inputs or analog values that are being used in the logic loop to generate an output value this is a simple logic loop to set up that can really make the efficiency of your overall HVAC system dramatically increase by increasing the discharge air temperature slightly you unload the hot water reheat or the electric or whatever type of reheat system you have using the main air handler to heat the space allowing less demand from those reheat systems while at the same time having a cool enough temperature to cool any spaces that go above set point. A uh, perfect example, computer labs, that sort of thing, that have a large heat load. Anyways, I hope this helps you to better understand how you can simplify some of your HVAC automation and make your systems more efficient.